there really is something wrong with me, you know. If only that fool Terwilliger could find it. The Colonel is very worried about me. Yes, ma'am. I don't mean to be a burden to him. Heaven knows commanding this post takes all his time and energy. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Excuse me. And tell Dr. Terwilliger I want to see him. Immediately. Yes, ma'am. Easy there, Nurse Damon. Oh, I'm sorry. Why? What a face. Someone died? Not likely. Ah, uh -huh. the Grand Duchess of Fort Hardy, suffering as usual from acute acidity and terminal boredom. <laughs> well, bear up, child. One of these days, we may actually find something wrong with her. Tommy. <gasps> Tommy. Tommy. Uh, uh, Orderly. Orderly. Uh, Nurse? Yes. Tell him to set up the OR. Find Dr. Edwards. Tell him to scrub up in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Soldier, get word to Lieutenant Damon, Baker Company. Tell him to get here on the double. Yes, sir. Feeling better? Feeling rotten. Is it the baby? Well, it certainly isn't your appendix, my dear. What's wrong, Twiggy? The pain. You're doing just fine. Hey, I'm a registered nurse, remember? Stop threatening me with your second-rate credentials and lie down. Sam. The messenger's being dispatched to the field. Now lie back and relax. Sir, I have an urgent message for Lieutenant Damon. Lieutenant's commanding a training exercise at the moment. But he's having a baby, sir. That is, the lieutenant's wife is having a baby, sir. I'll see that he gets the message. Shall I wait, sir? To drive the lieutenant back? Didn't I just finish telling you that Lieutenant Damon was commanding a field exercise? Yes, sir. Then I wouldn't imagine he'd be driving back with you, would he? No, sir. Dismissed. Very good, sir. Everything else is set, sir. All right, give me a few. All right, sorry, move them out. I got the fuse lighter, sir. Get it. Apparently a misfire, Captain. Apparently. Each and every one of you has now been cut to pieces by enemy cavalry. What do you use to light the fuse, Lieutenant? A match, sir. You realize a fuse lighter is an article of issue. 
Yes, sir, but a match is sure. Yes, I can see that. Well, that's that. Remove the charge. Sir? Now, Lieutenant. Sir, do you realize that a blasting detail is required to wait at least 30 minutes after a possible misfire? Don't quote procedure to me, Damon. Damon, I order you to remove that charge. Sir, I refuse to carry out that order. You are refusing to obey the direct order of a superior officer? That charge shouldn't be touched for 30 minutes to three hours. I know it, you know it, and they know it. Lieutenant Damon, I am placing you under arrest for direct disobedience of orders. You are confined to your quarters until further notice. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Good. Now move out. Sarge, get him out of here. Yes, sir. All right, pull him up. Lieutenant, I've rescinded my previous order. You're, you're not to consider yourself under arrest. May I ask why, sir? Well, let's just say that I'm that I'd prefer the incident forgotten. I'll bet you would. Don't get smart with me, Damon. Smart? Hell, you damn near got me killed out here. Me or one of my men. Now you're telling me to forget it? For your own good. For the good of the service. I can't see what the service is. Lieutenant, got. just keep in mind a couple of things. You set that faulty charge, not me. You're the one who failed to follow procedure. You want to file a report? Go ahead. But just remember, in a month, this whole incident will be forgotten, and I'll still be captain. And you'll still be lieutenant. Do I make my meaning clear? Perfectly clear, sir. One minute, your man child. As promised, somewhat ahead of schedule. But he's so scrawny. Sure he's all right? No fret, Sam. He's all Damon, and he comes complete with all the required parts. How about Tommy? She okay? Yeah, resting comfortably. Uh, you can see her as soon as you get those things off. Good. Said everything. Twiggy said what I asked him to say. There, uh, there were a few complications. They, uh, they had to rearrange my insides a little. I'm gonna be fine, but well, the cupboard's bare, Sam. That was it. The one and only model. But he doesn't come with any lifetime guarantees. So we have to take very good care of him. Oh, we will, honey. I promise you that. Sam. 
Dear Dad, well, your grandson made his debut in style this morning. While Donald Caldwell Damon was being christened by Chaplain Peterson, Chaplain Peterson was being christened by Donald Caldwell Damon. He passed it off as an occupational hazard. Meanwhile, Captain Townsend has been swapping goose grease all over Sam. Sam won't say anything about the range incident, but the men have already nicknamed Townsend Old Hangfire. Things have been discouraging the past few months, Mom. Congress cut back on appropriations again, so that means no promotion for the fourth straight year. Christmas was a little lonesome. We tried to call you, but the lions were tied up all day long. Gosh, we miss you. Oh, and we have a new addition to the Damon household, named Buddy. Origins undetermined. Size minuscule. But Tommy fears the worst. The worst is never knowing where you stand. Sam's up every night studying, trying everything he knows how to make his captaincy. I'm not really complaining, Dad. I guess I'm just feeling a little blue over a note I got from Emily. Seems Court's move to Washington paid off for him. His colonel made general, and Court made captain. God, how I envy them. Don't rush off on my account. Look, I told you, I gotta work the night shift. So that means I gotta report back to the garage. And I told you we have to talk. Next time, baby. There isn't gonna be any next time, you creep. Suit yourself, babe. We didn't sign a long-term contract. I want some money. What are you doing? Turning pro? I'm pregnant. Yeah, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. What do you want me to do about it, Mary? I mean, that'd be kind of cute, wouldn't it, huh? You and me and the captain? There's a doctor. Well, he used to be a doctor. He can take care of it. He wants two hundred dollars. Oh, swell. Why doesn't he ask me for two thousand? Maynard, please. I know it's a lot, but I have to have it. Hey, here, here. Here's your two hundred, right here. Maybe three or four. Now, what are you trying to dig into me for? I couldn't sell those. I mean... I wouldn't even know how. I wouldn't know what to say to court. Please. I just don't know what to do. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But hey, listen, now what's the big deal? I mean, I know you and the captain ain't been exactly socializing lately. But so what? I mean, the next couple of weeks you'll be real nice to him, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then you hit him with the big news, and, and who's to know? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's really wonderful. What's the matter with you? secret lover. A big, deep, dark secret. Hey, look, I don't know what else to tell you. You want 20 bucks, okay. But 200, no chance. You want the 20? Go to hell. I'll see ya. That's what you think, you creep! Shooting court. Thank you, sir. 
I think the Signal Corps is in for a little surprise next Saturday. Oh? Major Hinkle scored a 28 twice in practice last week. Well, maybe I better double my bet with Waldecker, huh? <laughs> How does your Sunday look? Open. Something hmm. up? Yeah, well, uh, General Chandler's given a little get-together for some of the Missouri congressmen. Trouble? Well, no, not really, but the, uh, the Air Corps boys got to him. You know, they're always asking for more money for planes and more money for pilots and more money for airfields. <laughs> Next one's gonna be one in the air, all of Billy Mitchell's strategies in spades. You blame them? Hell no, they might even be right. But if Congress keeps giving all those fly boys that money, we're gonna wind up with pocket change for ourselves. Anyway, keep Sunday loose, huh? I will, sir. I uh, haven't seen that pretty little wife of yours around much lately. She keeps busy. Ah. Uh -huh. Bring her along. Yeah, that's a very special request from the general's wife, so she can kind of keep the ladies' things in order, you know? We wouldn't want to disappoint her, would we? No, we wouldn't. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. Sergeant? Phone call for you, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. Yes? What? He just started throwing up, that's all, for no reason. Excuse me. And how old is the child? He's six months. Uh, he'll be six months Excuse Friday. me, I'm looking for my wife. Just one moment, sir. Look, I just got a phone call. My wife has had an accident, I want to see her. Mrs. Massingale. Massingale, last cubicle on the left. Captain Massingale. Yes? I'm Dr. McCabe. My wife, how is she? She's going to be all right. Would you step in my office, please? I'd like to see her. Now, Captain. Sweetheart, who's the uh, breast just walked in here? General Pershing. Oh, that's very funny. Suicide? No. That's impossible. It's not only possible, but a certainty, Captain. She'd been unconscious at least an hour. We pumped out her stomach. And I notified immediately. Where was the housekeeper? Housekeeper? Your wife wasn't found at home, Captain. We received an emergency phone call from the manager of the Green Apple Motor Hotel on M Street. What? What are you talking about? I'm a busy man, Captain. I have patients to attend to, and I can't spend all day in this police report. Okay, now. Is this the first time your wife has attempted something like this? Captain Massingale. Must have been some kind of mistake. Carelessness. She had no reason. Perhaps the child. Child? I'm sorry. I assumed you knew. In the ambulance, she was groggy and babbling to herself. She didn't want the baby. She was afraid to have it. I'm sorry, Captain, but you see my predicament. She tried to kill herself and the baby. The law is very specific on this. I have to file this report. I get your report. I'm taking her home. I'm sorry. Is she well enough to move? Yes, but... Then I want her out of here. I can't do that. Oh, but you can, Doctor. And you will. This is a municipal hospital, dependent upon Congress for its funds. I fail to see... My wife's uncle is Paul Sinclair. Senator Paul Sinclair. I had no idea. So you see the delicacy of the situation. Yeah. Of course, Captain. Of course. I'll make arrangements to have your wife moved immediately. Thank you. Just sit down right here on the bed. That's my girl. Uh, I'll get your shoes, ma'am. That's all right, Jane. Thank you. Would you leave us? Yes, but... Fix yourself some lunch. 
Yes, sir. You really meant to do it this time, didn't you? No half-hearted dose. No phone call to the police. No melodramatic little note just down the hatch and that was it. What was his name? See the only one? Oof. Were there others? You know, Emily, it's not that I mind you sleeping around so much. But do you have to be so damned careless? Meaning what? I mean that you started to babble in the ambulance. Emily, why didn't you tell me you were going to be a mother? I would have broken out some champagne. I could have had a little toast. You, the baby, and the father, of course. <laughs> if you know who he is. Stop it! I'm not afraid of you anymore, Court. Good. I guess it took something like this morning to make me realize just how far down I've gone. That I was willing to kill myself and my baby rather than face you. It won't happen again. In a few days, I'm leaving for Connecticut. I'll tell the folks some story which they may or may not believe. Dad will arrange for a lawyer, and that will be that. Oh, no, my darling. That will not be that. Yes. Excuse me, sir, there's a man to see you. I don't want to see anybody right now. He said to tell you he's from the newspaper. Tell him I'll be down in a minute. Yes, sir. We'll finish this when I get back. Operator, please. I'd like to make a long-distance call to Cost Cobb, Connecticut. Yes, and hurry, please. It's an emergency. Afternoon, sir. Harry Shepard, Daily Times. Sorry to intrude. That's quite all right. Why don't you come in? Thank you. Normally, I brief the press in my office, Mr. Shepard. Well, this has nothing to do with the Army, Captain. I work the police beat. How's your wife, sir? The lines can't be tied up. Operator, please keep trying. My wife? Fine. Well, I'm glad she's better. Of course, she certainly wasn't looking any too good a couple of hours ago. I'm afraid I don't know what it is you're talking about. I was at municipal emergency when they brought her in. I thought there was something familiar about her face, and then when you came in, it all came to me. Senator Sinclair's niece. What is it I can do for you, Mr. Shepard? Just a story. I've got quite a bit so far. The overdose, the motor hotel. I talked to the manager, he gave me a real earful. I've even got a description of the man she was with. If you print one word of that, just one word. You'll do what? Bust me? You know, you're not talking to any shave tail second lieutenant. I'll sue you and your paper. For what? For reporting facts that are already on the record? Well, go ahead, you do that. But meanwhile, have you got anything to say? No? Well, then, I'll just have to write that Captain Massingale, husband of the senator's niece, had no comment. Good day. Hold it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, Mr. Shepard. I, I guess I'm still in a state of shock. 
Well, that's understandable. Tell me, did you come up with this all on your own? It's my job. And you do it very well. The problem is... Well, I needn't tell you. My wife has some severe emotional problems. A story in your paper might destroy what little stability she has left. Well, I... Now, if there was just some way that you and I could accommodate one another, I would be eternally grateful. So would the senator. Isn't that the problem? My condition? Now, before we were interrupted, I believe you were going to run off to Connecticut and divorce me. Do I have a choice? Sit down. Oh, court. Sit down, please. I don't pretend to understand what it is that drives you into someone else's bed. I'm sure you don't. But I'm still your husband. In name only. But your husband, nonetheless. All right, I can't give you a child. <laughs> We've tried. Oh, well, we've tried. Now you're going to have a baby. Baby needs a father. Well, here I am. As far as we're concerned, as far as the world is concerned, that is my child. For whose sake, Court? Mine? The baby's? Or yours? Lee. What difference does it make? A child is gonna need a father. Home, love. Just stop treating me like a fool. I can see what you're doing. You don't care about the baby. You want to use it to hide behind. The way you hide behind me. Well, not this time, Court. You're not hiding behind me, Emily. You try to divorce me and I'll fight you all the way. You can't tell him it's not my child unless you tell him where it came from. Is that what you want? Get into court and tell them that you're an adulteress and that that child is a bastard. <laughs> yes. Phone call from. Yes, put her on. Hello? Hello, Mother. <laughs> yes, I can hear you fine. No, nothing's the matter. As a matter of fact, Emily has some wonderful news for you. Wait a minute, I'll put her on. Mother? No. No, I'm fine. Yes, Court. Court and I... Mother, I'm pregnant. Yes, pregnant, expecting. Yes, Court and I are very, very happy.
I'd like to tell you things are going well, Dad, but they're not. It almost seems like the end of the world, godforsaken and desolate. And the days just seem to drag along. Make work, keep busy, anything to try to fill the time. It's hard, very hard. And I'm not sure how much longer I can keep going. Lucky hit, J.L. Sam, I sure wish you'd stop waving off my fastball. Damn it, J.L., they're hitting your fastball clear to Mexico. Just stick with your curve and the spitter. Dang, I ain't got enough spit left to lick a three-cent stand. <laughs> Where's that wife of yours, anyway? Seems like every time she don't show up, we get ourselves in trouble. Hey, you don't worry about Tommy. You just worry about the next two hitters. Come on. Hello? Yes. Oh, yes, of course I understand. Well, I, I realize it's late in the semester, but I thought... But Donnie's very bright. Well, he already knows how to read, and I'm sure he could catch up. Yes. Yes, I see. Thank you. Sam, why aren't you ever here when I need you? You can do it, mate. Come on. Now batting for Company G, Chrysler. Ben. Hey, Sam. What the hell are you doing here? Just transferred in this morning from Wahoo. Ain't that a hell of a note? Like going from the pearly gates to the fiery furnace. <laughs> come on, come on, you guys. Let's play. Yeah. Yeah. All right, JL. Get this bush leader. Screw in here. Sweet. Nice toss, man. Two down, ninth inning. Don't get worried now, Ben. Ah, JL, drill it! Just wanted to go home. <laughs> oh, I sure fooled you with that pitch. I'll say that. <laughs> hey, you'd have fooled him anymore, JL. McCracken would still be out there in left field looking for it. <laughs> Come on now and drink your milk. I don't want any more. Two swallows. One. Two. That's my boy. Marge, you sure you wouldn't like something? A beer, maybe? Oh, no, the soda's fine. Okay. Good thing, honey. The way JL's putting that beer away, there won't be any left anyways. All right, ladies, let's have a little service. See what the boys in the front room will have. We have to take our clothes off, Sam, honey. You can't have it. Oh, mainly. Here you go, mighty warrior. Give your son a kiss so he can get to bed. There we go, partner. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Sam, be careful. Ah, uh, he's all right. <laughs> all right, all right, that's enough of that. Daddy? When can we go down and see the other soldiers? Uh, you know what your mom says. Aww. Tell you what, maybe next Sunday you and me can go out and hunt some jackrabbits. Like that. Okay. Well, what do I say now? Old Tommy's just had another one of those days. Here, 
Have another beer. Yep, we will. <laughs> hey. uh, I could have pitched professional, and that's a fact. I had me a look see from a scout from the Philadelphia Athletics. <laughs> it was uh, spring of 1917. <laughs> Dang, that's over 11 years ago. What happened? Did you get drafted? Drafted? <laughs> you volunteered. <laughs> Oh, hell, boy. I could have been tossing strikes past Jimmy Fox and Ruth. Wet nose and a full bunch of greenies. <laughs> you think anybody in his right mind's gonna live this kind of life? $14 a month and found. I heard they're paying kids between $20, $25 a week up in Detroit in the car factory. If I had me any sense, I'd throw all this in and I'd go out there and I'd get me some. Then why don't you? Don't you think I couldn't? Well, then go ahead. $25 a week for kids? Well, that means a man of your ability could make, uh, 50, 60 dollars at least. Now, don't get him started, Tommy. Next thing you know, he'll be writing to Connie Mac himself. <laughs> I doubt it. Hey, easy, honey. Oh, for God's sake, Sam. Do we have to sit through another evening telling each other how wonderful we are? Sorry, Tommy. I didn't mean no harm. I was just trying to pass the time. I'm sorry too, Jail. Just seems that's all we ever do. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh, hey, no problem, old buddy. We know just how she feels. <laughs> Place like this gets to feeling like a chicken coop no time at all. Yeah. Listen, will we see y'all on Tuesday at the club? Yeah, I think so, Marge. I'll talk to her. Dale, keep that arm loosened up, huh? Sure enough, will. All right. <laughs> hey, nice seeing you, son. Hey, Ben. Take Thank care. You. Not now. Not right, Bailey. Here we go. Good night. Good night, honey. Clean up. Just leave it. I'd better do it now. I said leave it. All right, I'll leave it. Why the hell did you do that, Tommy? And if you gotta say it to somebody, why don't you say it to me? I pick on JL. Sorry, it was rotten. Let's drop it. What happened? Let's not start again tonight, Sam. Start hell. We haven't stopped. Not since we got into this pest hole. Well, don't blame this place on me. You're the one who wants to play soldier. Let's back to that again. I found your son out by the west fence today, Sam. Watching range practice. All right. So he was watching. I don't want him watching. Oh, come on, Tommy. You can't keep a kid like that locked up in a house. Do you know where I was today? Sykestown. I went to see the principal of the public school. We've been over that. I want him here. Well, don't worry. You're going to get your wish. The principal oozed charm for about 15 minutes. 
until he found out Donnie's father was a military man. On his scale, I think that put us somewhere just ahead of Negroes and below white trash. I didn't know you were a bigot. I'm a mother, and I'm frightened for my son. Damn it, Tommy, there's nothing wrong with that post school. How would you know? You've never been to one. You ever wonder what kind of people end up teaching in a place like that? My God, no wonder the Army's so full of misfits, neurotics, and losers. In which category am I in? Oh, Sam. You're in a class all by yourself. The knight errant of the drill field. A misguided dreamer who can't tell the difference between topsoil and plain old manure. That's right, just run away. For once, just once, can't you stay and face it? You made a mistake, Sam. A big, long, nine-year mistake. Have the guts to admit it. If not to me, at least to yourself. Maybe you're the one that made the mistake, Tommy. Maybe we both did. It, Sam. Just want to stay and face it. Well, Van, now he played football and baseball and just about everything, I guess. And I was the number one cheerleader for the team. And that's how we met. I never could figure out how he took a liking to me. Well, I'd say that's pretty obvious. Oh, I know I'm pretty and all. But I just... I just don't understand a lot of things. Um... Tommy, I'm real sorry about the other night. You know, what happened and all. Why? It wasn't your fault. Well, I know, but... You know, Sam inviting us over like that at the last second and you not knowing anything. Don't be silly. Tommy, I know it's none of my business, but um, if you ever have anything you want to talk out, well, I'm a real good listener, and I keep what I hear to myself. Thanks, Marge, but... Do you hear anything? Well, no. Neither do I. Donnie? Donnie? Buddy? Maybe they just went out to play. What, without telling me? Well, I'll look in his room.